If you're working with slicers and you power BI report, then sometimes you run into a situation where if there's a selection of one slicer, the other slicer should get disabled because otherwise it would lead to a confusing user experience. Now, let me give you an example. Let's say you have a slicer with fixed periods that the user can choose from, like the last three, six, and 12 months. And right next to it, you have a timeline where the user can pick a custom date range. Well, if you have a selection in the first slicer, well, to have the ability to select a custom date range doesn't really make sense anymore. And that slicer should get disabled. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to set it up. What we want to achieve here is that we can dynamically disable slices. Now, for that, we are going to need a measure that checks for a certain condition. Now, here, that condition is going to be if there's a selection in the period slicer. If there is, then the date range slicer with the timeline should get disabled. And if there isn't, we should be able to pick a custom date range. All right, now let's see how it's done. Let's go over here and add a new measure. And I'm going to call this measure timeline slicer disable. All right. And over here, the condition that we want to check for is if there is a filter, so if is filtered. And then here we need a reference to the column or the table that you're using for that slicer. So in this case, I have here a table with the custom periods, right? The last three, six and 12 months. And I wanna check if there's a filter on that one. So I'm going to say is filtered, custom periods, all right? And then if there is a filter on that table, then I want to return one and otherwise zero. All right, so now that we have that measure, we can use it as a visual filter for a timeline slicer. So let's do that. Now let's select our timeline slicer, then open the filters pane, and we can drag our timeline slicer disable measure onto the filters on this visual section. Now, here we need to set up the condition. When should the items show? Now the items should show when that measure returns zero. If it's one, then the timeline slicer should get disabled. So over here, the condition is, is equal to zero. Don't forget to click on apply filter. All right. Now at the moment, we can pick our date range because there's no selection in the first slicer. However, as soon as I make a selection here from the first slicer, you see, ah, the second slicer get disabled. And now I cannot do anything. There's also an information icon that says the date range is not available. Now, I don't know if this is clear enough for the end user and what is going on, why that timeline slicer gets disabled, but maybe we can make it one step better to make the header text of that slicer, of the timeline slicer, dynamic, right? So if there's a selection here in the first slicer, it should say something like, okay, first, um, deselect the selection that you have from that first slicer. Okay, and also that you can achieve with a measure. So let's add another one. And let's call this measure CF for conditional formatting, text, timeline. All right, now this is going to be equal to, here we need an if function again, because we need to check, is that timeline disabled or not? So for that, we can just refer to our measure timeline slicer disable. Now, if that one is equal to one, that means it is disabled. And then we want to say something like um, deselect uh, period first. All right. And otherwise we have our normal uh, slicer header that was already in place and that is date range. Okay, so now that we have that measure, let's go back here to our date range timeline slicer then formatting options, and then the formatting options, there we can go to the slicer header, and here we have a FX button right next to title text, which is always good, because then we can control that element with a measure. Now, format style, field value, measure that we're going to use, what well, we just wrote it, right? So that is here, the CF text timeline, and then click on okay, and you see now the text is deselect period first, because I have a selection there in the first slicer. If I clear that slicer, then, ah, it becomes enabled again, and the header text now says date range. Perfect. Now, the only thing that I still would see as an improvement point is if that text would also be a little bit more grayed out, huh? so like the rest of that timeline slicer, that we can achieve, again, with a measure for conditional formatting of the color of the header text. So I'm going to go back over here, and then maybe we can just copy what we wrote before there for the text, all right? Then I'm going to add a new measure, paste it in there. And the only things that we need to update here is that we are not talking about the text anymore. 
And instead of returning text, then we want to return a color. So if it is disabled, then I want to have, let's say, light gray, or this light bluish color, huh? but this is good enough. And then if it's enabled, then I want to have that dark blue color. I figured out the hex code just before, which is this one over here. Okay, now let's then use that for conditionally formatting the header text. Again, select the slicer, then go to formatting options. Then here we have the slice header and there we have the font color. So click on FX, choose here field value. And then we can just type in CF and you see all of these conditional formatting measures pop up. And that's why I always start with CF. And then here we have the color measure. Click OK. And now it's properly disabled, right? So it's very clear that you cannot make a selection there. And as soon as you clear the selection, it becomes enabled again. Perfect. All right. And that's it. This is how you can disable a slicer conditionally on selection of another slicer. Now let's see if this also works for text slicers, because over here we have just a timeline. Now I'm going to add two slicers. There you go. Here we have a slicer that shows the different stores that we're selling from, and we have a slicer with different promotions that we run. Now the thing is though, if we make a selection here, let's say for the Amsterdam store, then we can choose a certain promotion and now you see the actual sales. Now, if I would have the catalog store selected, however, nothing shows because we don't run any promotions for the catalog store. It doesn't make sense to have that second slicer there. All right, so another situation where I want to disable that second slicer. Now, can we use exactly the same approach? Let's see what happens. Now, before I'm going to follow kind of the same steps from before, always double check as well if there is a slicer interaction. So if you go to format, edit interactions, Always check, is there an interaction from that first slicer to the second slicer? So does the first one filter the other one? Otherwise, it would not show which filters are applied, right? So uh, for the first one here, that period slicer filters the second one. And if I uh, make a selection over here, then that selection gets passed on to the other one. And so it gets filtered. And that is really important. Otherwise, the measure wouldn't work. All right, so double check that first. Okay, now I'm going to turn added interactions off again and try to, well, disable the second slicer from promotion when there is a selection in the first slicer store. Okay, now how to do this? Let's start with the measures again. So I'm going to go here to data, metrics, and add a new measure. Now let's call this one promotion slicer disable. And here we are also going to use an if function to check a certain condition, but this time we're not checking if there's a filter on the first one. We want to check if the selected value from the first slicer, so selected value from the first one, and this is the store. And if that store is equal to the catalog store. Now for this to work, it needs to be exactly the same. So spaces matter. Let me just get rid of that space. Now, if this condition is true, well, then I want to disable the slicer and otherwise not. So one, zero. So now that we have that measure, let's use it as a filter for the second slicer. So I select the promotion slicer and then we can drag the promotion slicer disable measure onto the visual level filters there. Now we want to show the items when this is equal to zero, apply the filter. Now one item was still selected from before. This is just how the native slicer works. So if I disable it, it will disappear as you see. All right, so no items for the promotion slicer are visible. Now, if I select one of the other stores, then I do see all of the promotions. But as soon as I switch to catalog store, you see hmm, it's empty, no items. So it is kind of disabled, but it doesn't really look as it is disabled, right? So. How can we just change the look and feel so that it's really disabled? Well, for that, well, we can, again, use, with, use conditional formatting and apply a light gray color to the header, change the text, just like we did before uh, with two measures. So let me create these two measures quickly. And here we have the first measure, CF text promotion slicer, which just checks if the slicer uh, should be disabled or not. If it is disabled, then show promotion not relevant in between brackets or any other text that makes sense. And otherwise just the normal header text promotion. Perfect. Now the other one, again, follows a similar logic. So let me go there, CF color promotion slicer. Again, checks if the slicer is disabled. If it is, then show the color in light gray. And otherwise that dark blue 
color. Okay, now let me also use them then on conditional formatting. So I go here to format, slice a header, and then here for the text, I'm going to click on the FX button. And then here we can just search for CF. Here we have CF, and then we want to have the text promotion slicer. Click on OK. And let's then also change the font color, FX. We want to have here the color for the promotion slicer. Whoops, I have the wrong format style. Let's go here to field value and then CF color promotion slicer. Okay, and now the slicer actually looks disabled. And as soon as we switch to a different store, like Amsterdam store, it becomes enabled again. Perfect, exactly what I was looking for. And that's it. So this trick works for date, timeline slices, as well as text slices. Now let me know what you think. Put your comments and questions in the comment section below. And if you want to learn and see more about slices, then check out these videos over here. And if you want to build complete reports with me from beginning to the end, then check out my upcoming design training. Thank you very much for watching. I see you in the next video.